him getting caught again. Next thing we know, these girls are in Nigeria. Next thing we know, the police know where they are and then they don't. Now they're missing. Now they're dead, pardon me. We'll tell you that whole sordid tale in just a moment. After which we move it forward by speaking to Kojo Yangson who is in Takrade this morning. But Total Petroleum is continuously innovating and delivering better energy solutions that bring value to its cherished customers. Introducing a new addition to the Total Quartz range, the Quartz 9000 Future GF50W20, a fully synthetic fuel economy engine oil, specially formulated with age resistance technology ART for the latest generation engines that require zero W20 or a viscosity grade in its class. Quartz 9000 Future GF50 W20 reduces your fuel consumption, increases your oil change interval, ensures excellent engine protection and cleanliness, protects emission control systems, and reduces the release of harmful emissions into the environment. Total Quartz 9000 Future GF50 W20 delivers beyond performance. Total Quartz engine oil keep your engine younger for longer. Big Stories is brought to you by Guarantee Trust Bank. Would you rather bank with us? Vodafone the future is exciting, baby. In latex foam, your partner for life. Social media messages on the Super Morning Show are brought to you by Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank, and Telesol 4G Just a Touch. It's time to grow faster and go further with Echo Bank's DigiBanking Pack. The Echo Bank DigiBanking Pack is specially designed with the growth of your business in mind. Benefits include zero opening balance, no monthly service charges, automatic access to Echo Bank's payment and collection solutions, loan of up to 200,000 Ghana cities and more. To find out more about how to grow faster and go further with a bank that understands your business, visit the nearest EcoBank branch called toll free on 3225 or contact us on digipackgh at ecobank.com. EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank. So this is where it all began. For the parent is sadness. Well, mine is not. It is anger. And I expect you to be angry. The kind of anger that is required for state agencies to act swiftly. In the meantime, we're still looking for the girls. See something, say something. Imagine waking up one morning with a dream, with a hope. Maybe you just want to live your life. And then sometime during the day, somebody just kidnaps you. And all these dreams are extinguished. This is what has happened to three young girls in the second E Takrali metropolis. Their families are agonizing, their communities are distraught, and the nation is seriously looking for them. We need your help. If you see something, say something. Our thoughts and prayers at this moment are with the families of the victims. And we also call on the relevant state agencies to expedite action, double the effort to ensure the safe return of these girls. Imagine the agony of losing a sister or a dear one. These are three mothers looking for three daughters. Where is the hope? Where is the ray of sunshine? We need to find our girls. Bring back our tardy 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 girls. Unfortunately, the girls never came back. We made this video at the beginning of the year. Around January, I remember very well when we realized that if voices are not added, we may not know what would happen. Today is the 17th of September. And what we're hearing is the IGP mentioning how these girls unfortunately died. Raymond Akwa is here, Enima Enimado is here. Before I bring Enima in, Raymond, between January when we made this video and audio and now, a lot has happened, particularly around the CID bus. Yes, and l this is because the gender minister spoke on January 27, mm -hmm. assuring the people that the girls will be found and that, in fact, they will soon be reunited with the family. Mm -hmm. The 21st of March, the Interior Minister also supported this course and said the police is on top of the matter. And if he added that if people did not believe in the police service of unraveling and getting to the bottom of matters, they should use this as a test case. And that so far as he's briefed, the police is on top of that particular matter. April 2, just a day from April 1. April 2 
was when the CID busted that particular press engagement. She was emphatic. Every line of her words were very assuring. Clear cut. We know where they are. One. Two. We will soon reunite them with the family. So they should not lose hope. These were, uh, of course, it was interlaced with other commentaries from her as to how they worked out and all of that. We know where the girls are. We are working hard together with other stakeholders so that these girls are brought back home. The assurance to the family is that they should keep on keeping on. We know where they are and they are safe. So very soon, they will brought back home and they will go back to them. So assurance, keep on keeping hope. We know where they are. Very soon, they'll be brought back home. They are safe. In between April 2. And the last time we made frantic demands. And you see, when she made that particular point, there were calls for that question to be answered. So when are you going to bring them back? Where are they? Have you already got... You see, the way she made the statement, it sounded more like, we, we don't only know where they are. We have them under our control. And all that is left is reuniting them. It was not surprising that 22 days later, that Daily Guy story came out. Mm. And the story suggested clearly that the girls have been brought to Accra. There's a BNI facility, which is a medical facility. Where they are being kept. Where they are being kept. So it heightened the hope that after 22 days when the CID boss had made that profound statement... We now have hope that some action has already happened. Now, what dimmed the hope was the family immediately saying that we've not heard anything like that. At least the police in contact with us have not told us anything close to that. Mm -hmm. Then that same day, the police issued a statement saying that we have not found them. We don't know where they are. Between April 2 and 24th, we have moved from we know where they are to we don't know where they are. But then even the and, CID and boss herself. I'm, yes, the CID boss said, we know where they are. Mm -hmm. The police in the statement said, we don't know where they are. And then she this, later this, went back on her word. Disregard, disregard anybody who says, or any media report that says we know where they are. Mm -hmm. That is what that particular um, C, uh, police statement said. Mm. Clearly telling us that not only should we disregard the reportage from the Daily Guide, but also the CID boss who is basically head of intelligence in that particular police department. Now, fast forward to she coming back. And that's where she made it worse. She can't say... Um, see, they are not me, 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 I made those comments because I wanted to assure the people and the families that we were working hard and we had made progress. From when I was awarded that, maybe I'd have said any point here, ye and no more German see money. But people misunderstood me. Super, yeah, yeah, yes, I hear. And you know, timelines. I mean, to me, found to say. However, I cannot give any timelines yet saying we will find them today or tomorrow and with the greatest of respect nobody misconstrued the cid boss her words were clear nobody compared her to say that we know where they are mm -hmm. we will soon reunite them with the family mm -hmm. they should keep on keeping hope mm -hmm. those were her exact words mm -hmm. any interpretation from the least perceptive observer will come to one single conclusion that at least we could and were in the position to get the girls home alive yes at no point in time the sea suggests that they could be dead they were dead we feared where they are they were their lives were in danger at no point in time was that suggestion made and you see so when she came back to now come and tell us that people are misconstruing what she said it's and first, you told us that you are giving hope to the family. Two, people are misconstruing what you're saying. So which one was the misconstrued point, the hope that you are giving to the family? Or that people believe that you indeed, as CID boss, you knew what you were talking about. It was that time that the 
security institutions lost it completely, not only with their family, but also with the rest of people who felt that there's hope getting the girls back. In fact, some of you went to the point of suggesting that then these people could be part of the problem because we know what has happened from the beginning. We know that when the gentleman Udo Tech was, when he, when he broke jail, the family and people were saying that there's word in town that said that the guy says he was aided by the police. Yes. He was aided by the police to leave that cell. Yes. So at no point in time did the family right from the beginning believe that the police either in Takrade or the, the, the particular cells where the gentleman was or mm-hmm. being in custody. Mm-hmm. Straight down to the police at the regional command and even at the national level really had their interest at heart. So if you heard one of the family members, that if this were to be a family member of any prestigious, privileged person in this society, hmm. would this have happened? So let's, beyond the woman who is the CID boss, and to those who even suggest that, oh, she was just relaying to us the information she's gotten from, that's not what she said in her defense. She didn't say that it was intelligence that failed us. No, she said that she was giving people hope. Yes. Is that, is that how the intelligence operations do their work? They give people... I wonder how... On what advice she proceeded on. Because hope deferred makes the heart sick, right? Mm. And I wonder what it means for the mental health of family members. But you know what, Raymond? Let's not dwell too much on those incidents. Those were statements that were made. Mm-hmm. The most recent one, which was yesterday, was when the IGP finally, literally, put the nail in the coffin. Because he came to say that the girls are no more. Let's hear him. When I come back, Malik and Enimwa are still here. We need to, first of all, look at this story we've been told by the IGP and ask ourselves, how sure are we that tomorrow, if this were to happen again, touch wood, the police are fully equipped to deal with this matter entirely? Investigations now establish that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takradi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate, actionable intelligence in good time to enable us to rescue the girls, we believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have to have continued with further kidnappings and murders. Investigations now establish that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takradi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate actionable intelligence in good time to enable us to rescue the girls. We believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have to have continued with further kidnappings and murders. So that's the IGP James Opombuenu speaking yesterday at the news conference. Let me begin with you, Malik. So we are being told by the IGP um, that as long as these suspects have been arrested, let me go to any more rather. Uh, as long as these suspects have been arrested, it means that the syndicate has been broken. Future crimes cannot occur from these guys. And so we should be fine. <laughs> um, it's it's quite interesting, um, that, that conclusion, because, I mean, yes, I, I heard him when he said, you know, the fact that the, um, they've been arrested and the fact that they have them in custody means that it has been stopped. Um, I, I think that the focus for us as Ghanaians, on one hand, yes, is the fact that maybe one crime syndicate has been stopped. But the focus really is on how equipped the police are to handle these things. Because crime will always be with us. There will always be people who will rise up and come against society and these kinds of things. And so our faith and our trust in the police services what is, is really under scrutiny right now. Because of the inconsistencies in the story, because of the delivery of information and because of the way the whole thing has been handled. Of course, this morning, my thoughts are with the families. Um, the highs and lows with this story have been incredible. Um, the mothers and fathers, times when they've been given hope, when it was false, um, 
I mean, we know that yes, hope defend makes the heart sick, and 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 the hope of something to come is is it give keeps our spirits up. But then, what about false hope? Because was it ever true? I mean, even when they look back, apart from the fact that they would be feeling so hurt by what has happened, there's also a sense of betrayal um, with, the, with the Ghanaian police, you know, and the fact that were they being told the truth? Were they being communicated with properly? And this morning, I'm quite sure that even as they mourn what seems to be some sort of closure, there's still the element of doubt, isn't there, Daniel? Because not just with them, but with all of us, with everybody I have spoken to, there's always that question of, Ugh, uh, we're not 100% sure that this is true. We're not 100% sure if this is not a ruse. We're not 100% sure if these are the girls. Yes, the DNA tests have come out and they've they've been confirmed and this is what is being said. But how true is it? I mean, it's going to take the family a lifetime, um, even with God, to be able to deal um, with with what has happened and the way that it was handled as well. So, Yeah, so Amalek, anyone makes the point about faith, in the police. Now, confidence in public institutions keeps eroding year in, year out. Every year the Afrobarometer comes out, we realize that people trust our institutions less. On the back of this, do we feel the police has done enough to try and repair, uh, regain the trust? It's a difficult question, Daniel. Um, difficult because if you follow the trajectory of this story, the way the story unfolded, the first response by the police, the tiredness of that response itself, the seeming lack of interest, the jumping of the escaping of jail by the key suspect. When you put all of that together, it is extremely difficult to hold any other view other than a view which supports the results of the Afrobarometer surveys that indicate a dwindling faith and trust in our institutions. And that worries me because the only reason, the only way all of us can make progress is if we can trust our, our institutions and we have absolute, absolute faith in them. Now, when you have the institutions bungled with basic things and every turn of the way you see clear evidence of bungling up of investigations of pursuing leads of disinterest by police authorities or some other authorities it's extremely difficult to continue to trust these institutions mm. now who are we what are we what can we do if we can't trust our institutions so it's all over the place on social media. The family members are saying we need a confirmation. How can the IGP, the Inspector General of Police, of the Ghana Police Service, say something and you will have people doubt what he's saying? That should cause everybody worry. That this is at the highest level. This is not some village police officer or some police officer sitting in a hamlet or a district somewhere, this is the top of the Ghana police service. Mm. Saying something that the people simply don't believe. That's how they serious it is. That's how serious it is. We just, the people just don't trust what the police are saying. So the family members say we need a confirmation. Even before the results were out, the family members said that, in fact, at the stage of the collection of the samples, the family members wanted an independent person to be present. Why was that? The clearest indication of the lack of trust that the family members had. Now the results are out, they still don't believe the results. It's not just the families. If it were the families, you would say, well, they are in pain, they are grieving, justifiably, they can uh, hold on to hope, even if false, and not trust and believe what the police are saying and live in denial. Mm -hmm. That is natural. Um, it's, 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 it's a natural mechanism to adjust to these kinds of pain. But you're having other citizens who are far removed from the pain and yet who are saying, look, we don't trust the police. Can we get an independent person to do this? Can we take the samples again and take them to South Africa and get somebody else to check this? Can we get the Americans or the British or the French to check this? 
So we don't trust our police. But this is and what it, it has is, become, hasn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. It is not... It's... It's not baseless. The lack of trust in the police is not baseless. As I said, just go through the story from the first response by mm. the police and you will have clear answers as to why the people don't trust the police. Really? But that worries me. I, 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 would, I, I would pray that from now onwards, the police, I believe, are capable. Mm -hmm. They have capable people. They have capable tools. They have requisite training. And if they are determined, they can prove to the Ghanaian people that the police are yeah. capable. I just think that they will be motivated enough to turn the corner and prove that they are capable. And we'll work to end the respect of the people once more. You know what? <laughs> so the, this Tiwa must go thing has started trending on Twitter. Yeah. And it's like this woman is being put there as sort of a scapegoat, if I can use that expression. <sighs> Um, to represent all the ineptitude or supposed ineptitude that has been seen mm. in the handling of this case. Do you think that's fair? I think not least because and on that day, if any other person had addressed the press and given the justification she gave later on, people will be justified in their quest to say, Madam, that person must go. You need to leave for us to at least keep some sections of that particular institution secret. And we should learn to do that in our part of the world. When you know that your conduct was completely on the wrong leg, when you know that your actions have displeased the public in such a way that it is almost irreparable, the kind of damage you cause to your own reputation and the reputation of the institution that you represent. People should be bold enough, own up to their deeds and say, don't worry, I'm leaving this particular office. The response she gave that, oh, my, my exit would not bring the girls or would not help in any way. We know. But we also have an institution that we want to repose some trust in. And so far as you remain the face of the CID, it is difficult, painfully so. And you see, it's also difficult because, one, this is a woman. And sometimes you would want to see women in places like that. So when there is this mass clamor, it's as if the target is to a woman. Because she's a woman. Yes. But this one... I fail to think it is the case. Mm. I actually think that anybody who was there would who have was there suffered the same thing. Did what she did would have been subjected to the same barrage of demand. And this is simple. But you see, Raymond, when a man or woman... One, the police is part of the governance institutions of the state. Mm -hmm. Sovereignty lies in the people. They determine who becomes their leader... And when their leader makes decisions, they can question it and demand changes. I think that she it will be in her own interest. At least she will salvage what is left of her credibility in this case. Mm -hmm. I believe so. That she will just say, well, all of this have happened. I made these comments in good faith, but it turned out that it didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. I am bound out of this office. I hope that somebody else will be able to reform the institutions in this case. Or else, there is no single conduct of the woman going forward that will not be attached to this issue. Even if she makes legitimate, truthful statements in any other matter, the same lens within which people are looking at her and judging her now will be used. I think it will be in her interest to finally say, if they say I should go, why not? I will step aside. In fact, this one does not even require any detailed, uh, what they call investigation or anything. I will step aside so that the institution can, in any case, she's become COP. It's a very privileged position to be in. Mm -hmm. She will not be a pauper tomorrow when she leaves that particular office. But continuing in office with all the doubts about her credibility, about whether or not to take her word for it, and let's not forget, the chunk of the problems people are having with this investigation is because of what she said. Well, you have a point there. It's exactly 8 a.m. here on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. 
Uh, let me tell you why I, I brought this leg of the conversation in. Apart from the fact that you Amazgo is trending number two on Twitter. Almost every tweet I have, at Ceci Selom says, many scandals have been heard when Tiwa became CID boss. It's high time she steps down. Tiwa must go. Hashtag Joy SMS. At Amadou underscore Osman who says, I'd like to find out how many police officers have lost their jobs over this tidy girls issue. Hashtag Joy SMS. At Loving Asibe says, the president should come out and issue an apology to the Tari family and also make it known to them that Ghanaians are mourning with the family deeply. At PKC says, and oh, the CID boss hasn't resigned. The president and police hierarchy suddenly don't know how to fire an officer who peddles in false hope. Perhaps to them, commissioning an elevator was enough penance. Shameless. Um, hashtag Chiwa must go. Hashtag Joy SMS. At K underscore Nyako, a typical Ghanaian lifestyle. The, the authorities will gather some money and make a large donation to the families of the Tadi girls. And that will be all. Hashtag Joy SMS. Danny Hologram says the pain, my greatest pain, isn't even the death of the girls. So it's the fact that Mami CID boss still holds her position after the serious child's play at Joy 97 FM. Hashtag bring back our Tadi girls. Hashtag Joy SMS. So there is... A significant percentage. Okay, so at Ni Bote Photo says she wanted to cool down Tempes at that time, but she got it wrong because Ghanaians don't forget things easily. Yo. Hashtag Joy SMS. I want to hear your voice on this. Do we think that these calls are fair? Do we think that it is fair? Because Malik, let's face it, there are institutional problems in there. There is the in the first place, why should a CID boss be the one? Who is making statements like this? Number one. Number two, there is a ministry of gender. There is an attorney general. There is a, an interior ministry. There is a head of police. Are we making this person a scapegoat in the first place? And anyway, will it replace the family's pain? Which is where I was coming to disagree with Raymond on the point about her stepping down, leading to reform and all of that. Um, I frankly have no position on whether or not she should go. I think the point is the police as an institution must do a lot of work in rebuilding his image. I have said before, many of us are able to come and sit here, do the work that we do, go home and sleep. I imagine, and I want to believe so, seem to be true, that it's because there's a police service in Ghana that provides us, all of us, with some security. But I think that the police must do a lot more to earn the respect of the people. And that when there are investigations, the police's statements must be final. That the people must trust. I mean, I do recognize that we are regrettably a very cynical society. That's what we have become. We don't trust anybody, especially particularly our authorities. But it is also because of years of socialization of lack of seriousness or lack of commitment in, in, in pursuing decisions, which is the reason why people just don't have faith in our institutions and in our authorities. But I worry because when the people whose duty it is to make sure that the security of all of us is guaranteed are not trusted, when somebody commits an, a crime and you can't trust that the crime will be investigated and that it will be done fairly and honestly and truthfully and that prosecutions will be done, that the proper evidence will be assembled and a proper conviction can be secured in a court of law, then it means you're actually not governed by law. And how can a self-respecting democratic society not be governed by law? How can you have laws, you have the most beautiful laws, which are not enforced because the people who are mandated to enforce the laws, for whatever reason, can look away. And there is abundant evidence indicating, and last, I think last week or this week, we were having this discussion on the morning show about the rate of investigations. Only 20% of crimes are investigated. That was and Friday. Friday, last week. And even the 20% that are investigated, just a few. And a while ago when we were doing the news review, we were talking about the 12 persons that were sent back from Australia, eight of which the CID itself said that they were going to be prosecuted. A statement was submitted to the National Security Minister in respect of that. A year down the line, 
only one person has been prosecuted. The rest of the seven, we are waiting for a statement from the Australian High Commission before we can proceed that we are incapable of collecting sufficient evidence to warrant a conviction in a court of law on our own, that we actually failed to identify this, that these people left here, we couldn't find anything. And up to now, we are still relying on the Aust Australians. We don't do ourselves any favors when we bungle these kinds of investigations. Not at all. Not at all. It's six minutes past eight. This is a super morning show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. And this is for the family of the four missing girls you know there were four girls their fourth parent came and said that his daughter had also been missing for a while so we just want to dedicate this to you a quick breather at this point when we come back we speak to dr kwesienin he's the head of faculty at the kofi Annan international peacekeeping and training center but gt bank has partnered with ghana post to enable your request for a mastercard or visa debit card and will be delivered to your home or office anywhere in accra just dial star 737 star 770 hash select option one that is new or renew card choose card type enter your delivery address that is your ghana post gps code enter your pin to confirm the request and your card will be delivered to you by 5 pm the following day to confirm receipt of the card dial star 737 star 700 hash select option two confirm card delivery enter your account number and pin Activate your card at any GT Bank ATM, use it for online and POS transactions, and get rewarded with amazing prizes and souvenirs. Enjoy endless possibilities with your GT Bank MasterCard and Visa cards. Order yours today by dialing star 737 star 700 hash. Guaranteed Trust Bank. Wouldn't you rather bank with us? Send money to your family and friends for free on Ghana's most secure mobile money operator, Vodafone Cash. There is absolutely no charge. When you send money from Vodafone Cash to Vodafone Cash, just dial star 110 hash to send money on Vodafone Cash today and enjoy this amazing offer. Vodafone Cash always stays safe and secure. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? Now, Telesaw offers the fastest internet experience on 4G in the country with coverage in Accra, Tema, Hoko, Foridia, Takrade and Bogatanga for the youth Telesol has Telesol Wave Bundles designed to cater for youth lifestyle starting from as low as 2 cities 50 pesos. Telesol has 4G internet service to meet business, homes and on-the-go needs. This is 4G data, not only on your phone and handheld devices, but also extended for use in offices and homes. Can you believe that? Telesol 4G for everyone. Now Telesol Fiber Broadband. Telesol has fiber broadband services for homes and offices at affordable rates with varied speeds, unlimited and bundled data options. Do you live at airport residential area, Laboni, Rich, Cantonment, Jolu and other locations? Call Telesol to find out about your area and service availability. Call Telesol today on 0303-975-342 or 344 and send us an email on inquiry at telesol4g.com. Telesol, just a touch. 
it's not just a difficult time for the families of those four girls. It's a difficult time for all of us here as Ghanaians as we ask ourselves the hard question, what does this mean for our safety? What does this mean for our security? What does this mean for how equipped our security services are? Must heads really roll? If this were to happen to you, how sure are we that it will be dealt with expeditiously or has the lesson been learned? There's also a groundswell. It seems to be a large call for the sacking of Mamitiwa Adedankwa, COP Mamitiwa Adedankwa. Says this must be another lie from them that the girls are dead because they lied to us. They have lied to us before about this matter. Hashtag Joy SMS. At Chameleon Mensa says this at Lawrence underscore B says when emotions override professionalism, this is how I treat her comments. When police gives assurance, in quotes, the, the people's hope aggravates. It's worrying, but as a professional at that level, she could have said it as it is. Hashtag Joy News, hashtag Joy SMS. At Jomevi underscore promise says Dan. In any serious country, the CID boss and the mayor of Takradi would have resigned for sleeping on their jobs. It's morally, socially and practically unacceptable for this to happen to the citizenry. Well, we're still keeping on God to save us. Hashtag Joy SMS. At Otabil305 says, False hope madam must admit and apologize to the families and the entire country then saying I was misunderstood. You went on to assure the family that their children are safe. Mami Tiwa, you do yawa. Kra. We'll be right back. When we come back, we speak to Dr. Chris Yenin of the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping and Training Centre. We go to him with our questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome to 21st Century Service Provision. Need to pay your ward school fees? Thanks, Daddy. Want to flex that girl? Wow, he's so cool. <laughs> Grandma needs airtime to fill me in on all the village filler. Hey, me be a guy. Or oh, you're just tired of having to hop from app to short codes to website and back. Welcome to the new phase of buying, selling and connecting with customers. Welcome to convenience and technology. Welcome to my GH Pay, mygHpay.com. Make or receive payments online from anywhere using a Visa card, MasterCard, GH Link card or your mobile money wallet. Businesses, associations, institutions can get listed for free today and enjoy a new world of convenience. Download my GH Pay for free from Play Store and App Store. MyGHPay.com. Buy, sell, and connect. The platform for everyone. Ma, please give me your phone. Let me make a quick call. So you are still on that network that gives you fear, data, and talk time. When Vodafone has double the red one, red two, and red five offers eh? for five cities, Chikra. You get two fifty minutes to call all networks, hey. two fifty megabytes data, and more. I'm moving to Vodafone today. <laughs> Switch to Vodafone to enjoy double into swap on red bundles of one, two, and five cities. Enjoy double talk minutes to call all networks. Networks and double data to browse. Vodafone always gives you more. Dial star 200 hash to subscribe now. Terms and conditions apply. The future is exciting. Ready? Comfort. Durability. Finishing. Quality. Choosing sofas and beds for your home, office or hotel couldn't be easier with an exclusive range of sofas and beds in various designs and colors from latex foam. There is so much choice whatever your budget. Latex foam, your partner for life. Ultimate luxury is what truly defines our newly unveiled O Plaza Suites. The Ark, nestled in the heart of Asukwa Kumasi. Choose from our 20 world-class penthouse suites in a relaxing setting with a private pool and a well-equipped gym and experience our home away from home. Call us on 050-7168-268 or visit our website www.kumasi.oplazahotel.com. O Plaza Suites, your new luxury accommodation address for your business trips or a simple getaway or plaza suites the pride of the ashanti region
Enjoy fast, affordable, and dependable 4G service in Accra and Tema. In your office, home, or on the go. Contact Telesol today on 0302-221-658 or 9 or 0303-975-342 or more. Or our website, telesol4g.com or send us an email through enquiry at telesol4g.com. Telesol 4G, just a touch. So you wanted that weave, that one that so long it touches your toes. Got it. A disco light for the room when the sweetheart comes over. Swoon your major in a bug debt. Those chrome spinning wheels that will have people at church praying to be you. <laughs> but them. Now, how about those mega woofers that will wake up the whole neighborhood? Add it. Because you've got the card that makes it all possible. You don't need a bank account to spoil yourself. You can now securely load funds for travel, pay for goods and services online and at your favorite shop, or give your loved ones unending spending options or possibilities with a perfect gift card. Get a Cowbank prepaid card now. Because you can. Cowbank. Forward together. Bibiara wame anko. Luciano le me anko. No fia no ye me anko. What are you looking for? Welcome, got it so. Great discount, do do. Yeah, my feet are so. Best bargains on our days. Everything here is a bargain. High quality, goods be a priority. So tell your mom, tell Poppy, tell your actually everybody. The Energy Commission and the Ministry of Energy present the 5th Ghana Renewable Energy Fair and National Energy Symposium, conference and exhibition on the theme, Opportunities for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency in a Constrained Energy Sector from the 7th to the 11th of October, 2019. Time, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Venue, the Accra International Conference Center. To sponsor or exhibit your renewable energy products and energy efficiency solutions, please call 020-518-1799 or 0302-813-756. Remember, attendance is absolutely free. This event is partnered by MIDA and GIZ. Sponsors, Volta River Authority, Buipa Authority, Goyle and Wilkins Engineering. A few minutes ago, officers of the Ghana Police Service informed four families in Takradi, in the western region of Ghana, that DNA tests conducted on some human remains discovered in the course of police investigations into the disappearance of four missing girls had turned positive as the remains of the girls. The Ghana Police Service has regret, therefore informed the families that the remains are those of Ruth Abaka, Prisla Blessing Bintum, Ruth Love Quazen, and Prisla Crunchy. Investigations now established that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takradi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate, actionable intelligence in good time, to enable us to rescue the girls. We believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have, to have continued with further kidnappings and murders. Investigations now established that the girls were victims of a serial kidnapping and murdering syndicate that operated in the Takradi area. While for various reasons we are unsuccessful in obtaining and acting on accurate Ashnabu intelligence in good time to enable us to rescue the girls. We believe that the arrest of the corporates has effectively thwarted the ability of this syndicate to have to have continued with further kidnappings and murders.
Now, I'll proceed to look at the sequence of disappearances of the girls. Miss Abekan went missing on the 29th day of July, 2018. The second victim, Miss Priscilla Bentun, went missing on the 15th day of August, 2018. Then on the 4th of December, 2018, Miss Ruth Love Quason, the third girl, was reported missing. The disappearance of the fourth victim, Miss Priscilla Mantibia Kranchi, was on 21st December 2018. On the 22nd day of December 2018, one day after the disappearance of Mantibia, the police was able to track the number through which some ransom had been paid. This led to the arrest of suspect Samuel Odo took West to assist with the investigation. Samuel Wills later escaped from police custody on the 30th of December 2018, but was rearrested three days later in an uncompleted building at Nkrofo, which is a suburb of Takradi. He had been convicted for escaping from lawful custody and brought to the CID, and he was brought to the CID headquarters where upon interrogation he admitted that he Together with suspects John Oji and John Shika, kidnapped the young girls and sent them by road to a location in Nigeria known as Baby Factory in Anambra State. He however denied knowledge of the whereabouts of Ruth Abeka. The evaluation of this confession and other intelligence reports from Nigeria on the location and modus operandi of this baby factory culminated in an assessment by the investigation team at this stage that they had a fair idea of the location of the girls and that it would be possible to bring them home. Between April and July 2019, several surveillance operations were mounted in Onicha, Oka, Port Harcourt, and Calabar in Nigeria. These were locations where suspects Samuel Odua took Wales emphatically mentioned at different times as places where the girls were sent and directed investigation teams too with the hope of tracing and rescuing the girls. Upon collaboration with other intelligence and investigative agencies across West Africa, the second suspect, John Oji, was tracked and arrested at the Flower border on 4th June 2019. During interrogation, John Oji admitted to know Samuel, but denied knowledge of any kidnapping. John claimed that he had met Samuel to collect some monies owed him after someone had sent him to Tamale in 2017 to bring him a money ritual box. The two suspects were put together for questioning. And while Samuel insisted that John knew where the girls were, John, on the other hand, maintained that his denial, maintained his denial of any involvement in the kidnapping of the girls. Two officials from the Nigerian National Agency for the Protection of Trafficked Persons came to Ghana on 17 June 2019 to assist the police with the investigations. They interrogated both Samuel and Oji at the CID headquarters. These further interrogations did not yield any new actionable information. Effort to locate the girls in Nigeria also yielded no results by July 31, 2019. The Nigerian lease, ladies and gentlemen, were assessed to a grown code and unreliable as at that date. Then on the second day of August 2019, the investigation team was informed by the National Agency for the Pro Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons in Nigeria that the third suspect, one Shika Inoidim, had been arrested in Abuja, in Nigeria. In a video interrogation of the suspects, someone was identified suspect Shika Inoidim John to the police as one of the accomplices. Suspect Shika also apparently knowing suspect Wills willingly spoke with him with regard to the kidnapped girls and in the process Wills asked Shika about the whereabouts of the kidnapped victims. In a confrontational exchange between the suspects that it was suspect Shika and one Sugoma who came to Ghana for the girls and sent them to Nigeria and that suspect Shika knew the whereabouts of the victims. Suspect Chika, however, denied this allegation. 
the Ghana Police Service is grateful to our sister security agencies in Ghana and the sub region for their support. Reexamination of associated locations in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, on the second day of August 2019, the investigation team. Point. He's talking, he's been talking about uh, the suspects who were involved as John Ogin. It's been a long day Nine point seven FM. You just heard the IGP James Opon Bueno addressing the nation as he describes some of the details of this. And I must confess, I don't understand. Like, no, Raymond is here anymore. I say, let me cut the music. I I don't understand. So these girls were in Anambra. Anambra. Hmm, Anambra is somewhere more central Nigeria. I just did a random Google check. From Anambra to Takrade is 1,163.5 kilometers. You pass through four countries, from Nigeria to Benin to Togo to Takrade. And it's a 20-hour, 56-minute drive without any delays at the, at the borders of any of these countries. But the kidnappers took these girls to Anambra and they ended up back in Takrade. I'm sorry, but it doesn't, I don't know. I, I am equally confused by that narrative. And that's the point I actually picked yeah, out I, to join I, the I, news I, I, I hate to do this to you, but do, um, Dr. Chris Yenin has joined us on the line. Maybe, maybe well, he's a, a security expert, so maybe Doc can help us. Um, Doc, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good morning. Uh, so, Doc, uh, there's, uh, you, you joined in the conversation at a point where we were perusing what the IGP said that these girls happened to be in Anambra and then back in Takrade um, for some reason, and that's how their bodies were found. What do you make of the facts as they are presented by the IGP? Well, I think it raises first the difficulty in actually finding them. If I, I, I'm not actually listening to the whole interview, but I think they had to visit these sites a couple of times before they found the remains. You know, so the lesson there is going back and looking at the procedures and processes, you know, for investigating a potential crime site. But you see, there's a much more difficult issue prior to this. That is a section of the service earlier on that is the CID claiming that they knew where the girls were. You see? And that assumption that they were alive. So the point is that is it possible at all in any way that the miscommunication and cross-communication may also have delayed the investigation process and diverted attention away from these sites where these girls were eventually found. You know, so there are quite a few loose ends that we need, you know, to look at. But let me make two points. One... It's my sympathy to the families. But secondly, also an appeal about the need for sensitivity as we discuss this issue. 
because you see somewhere out here in our country families and friends are hurting extremely badly and i'm praying that they've been giving the psychological help and the trauma counseling that they need this must be a very difficult day for them and i think we all should whilst looking for answers still show the sensitivity mm. that i think is very necessary mm. during this very difficult time so doc if i if i'm to understand the points that you made earlier these statements that were made may have diverted attention from where the body parts were eventually found, which is the home of Samuel Ludotek Wills. Do you yeah. believe that these statements have harmed the investigation in any way? Yes, I think we need to look at the sequencing of, of publicly communicated statements by the service itself and its ancillary branches. Because, see, if we are part of a whole, and one part says, oh, the problem that we are solving, it, has, it is almost being resolved. And that we know where we need to go to resolve the problem. Then it diverts attention. You know, so probably you guys can build a sequencing of the statements and draw the linkages between who said what, when, where, how, and how that led to other responses. I've also been reliably informed that yesterday's press conference, just after the acting IG had spoken, the officers behind him were gleefully laughing. I don't know whether it was what I've been told is true. It's, it's true, sir. Were it to be true, that it raises fundamental professional conduct issues. I mean, it raises such fundamentally difficult issues of trust, of respect, of reciprocity, that a service would need to help us to understand why that type of behavior particularly when the acting IGP has spoken in such solemn talks. And it raises some very disturbing questions in my mind that I wouldn't like to put out here for now. Extremely disturbing questions. We would have loved to hear them, but um, Doc, there have been massive calls for resignations, for dismissals, particularly directed at the CID Director General. Considering that you feel, even in what you've said, that there may have been some, distra some distractions from the actual investigation, would you say these calls are fair? Oh, I think it's legitimate for the public, particularly when they are unhappy, to call for these things. Resignations, dismissals, administrative queries, whatever. But also that in a democratic system and in a culture where resignations are not normal or usual, then we need to allow the institutional processes for disciplinary measures to work. And I think it is also fair to those whose resignation or dismissal is being requested for that they are given a chance to explain themselves. But this is a bigger trust issue. Knowing where we are located and the difficulties that our contiguous states have, it is crucial that the levels of trust between the public as a whole and then the law enforcement agencies continues to grow stronger and stronger. And certainly the sequencing of events around mm -hmm. the kidnap, the eventual discovery of remains and the conclusion by the DNA expert 
that it is these four girls and the joyous behavior of the officers behind the IGP shows that there's a huge gap between what the public expects and the levels of professional behavior put forward by some police personnel. And I'm hoping mm. that something can be done about it. You see, and this niggling question that I don't want to ask now. Go ahead with the question. Mm. Pardon? Go ahead with the question, Doc. No, I think when you play the role that I play, you also have a responsibility to give people a little chance. Mm. So the time will come. You, you and I, I, w I will put that question out there. Or several questions. Mm. Mm, mm. But I think we need to build trust and build trust quickly. Finally, Doc, um, so on the question that I asked, your position would then be that though calls for any resignation or dismissal by the public would be legitimate, the persons who are being called, whose resignation is being called for should be given their chance to explain themselves. Yeah, sure, yes. yes. Do, does that I think it's only fair. Yes. Does that then lend... Um, the opportunity for an inquiry into the matter or at least a disciplinary procedure by the police against these persons? Well, you know, the police service has the police council that plays the general oversight responsibility. Mm -hmm. Then they have the uh, TIFF, the Internal Police Professional Standards Bureau. Mm -hmm. Then they have the HEMAP, the Headquarters Executive Management Board or something like that. So there are multiple levels at which an inquiry, and I think it must be a full inquiry, mm. must be held. Or the Parliamentary Committee on Defense Interior that has the overall oversight of all the security and intelligence agents. You know, so, but because this is a trust issue, and my brother, look at the exploding demographics, okay? The expanding on planned urban spaces, the availability of guns, explosives, whatever you want, call it. The police alone cannot get a job done. What it means is that the public must have a partnership with the police. But partnerships work best when they are predicated on certain principles, mm. core principles, mm. Mm. of which one of them is trust, is reciprocity, is respect, is about the confidentiality of the information. But when you can give a press statement when I'm hurting, and then you laugh at the same time, that partnership is difficult to build. Truly. Right. Thank you. And very Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, uh, Dr. Christianin. Dr. Christianin is head of faculty at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping and Training Center. It's 22 minutes to the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. I want to open the phone lines very quickly. But of course, Raymond and Enimwa are here. We'll be having this conversation with you. So my panelists, uh, beyond Dr. Enina, Raymond Enimwa, and you listening to me, are these calls fair? Should there be an inquiry into the matter or we should leave it there? So Dr. Enin basically believes that we shouldn't allow this matter to end now because there seems to be a trust issue within the pe between the people and government or and the police. We should have an inquiry into this matter. Do you agree? Should people be fired? Today's agenda is brought to you by Associate General SG Ghana. The future is you. Uh, don't forget, Uncle Bo White's new play for quarter three is Not My Husband. The play shows at the National Theatre on 5th, 6th, 12th and 13th of October 2019 at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Early bird tickets are available from now to the 20th of September at 60 Ghana cities only instead of the regular 80 Ghana cities. All right. For further inquiries, 050-554-6010 or WhatsApp 050-554-6030 or email tickets at rovermanproductions.com. Buy your tickets now. Roverman Productions, be the difference. The Webster University Ghana campus invites you to their next business masterclass on the future of employability from class to hired this Thursday 
at 6 p.m. RSVP today to attend Webster University's Business Masterclass on the Future of Employability and leave better prepared to be the best candidate for top jobs. Uh, the campus is in East Lagon, just off Lagos Avenue, behind Media Pharmacy. If you have questions, call 054-012-0849. <laughs> So I'm coming back before I pick my first caller. 0302-216-541-0244-340-437. Before I, my first caller comes in, Raymond. So this T1 must go matter. Do you think those calls are fair? Most definitely. And let's be clear. The conduct of the CID boss doesn't rise to the level of somebody who ought to be trusted to continue keeping that position. I think that in very volatile states, people that have been on the streets demanding that something be done immediately. Sometimes we forget to put this in the real context it deserves. The entire reason why we actually gave power to the state was to protect us first and foremost. This state failed woefully in the protection that ought to be given to these girls. And that is why somebody ought to be held responsible mm. that the state mm. has failed in its fundamental role. Mm. And in this case, there were palpable lies told us. Okay. You know what, Raymond? Let me ask Stephen from Tessano if he agrees with you. Good morning, Stephen. Yes, good morning. So, do you agree with Ray that we have been lied to and so someone must be held responsible? I believe with him and all your presentations and even the gentleman you call in to break down the analysis for us. I agree with everything you guys was point on. While on earth, between the hours you analyze that they have to drive through and through Ghana, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, through and all that back to Takradi and all this time, securities that we are trained with our taxpayers' money were unable to identify a criminal with the children that could possibly have become a judge in the wood, a minister of state in the future. Look at what happened to the Canadian girls. Isn't it because we are being so, 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 so uh, unfair and unkind to our own? If it were to be one of them, is that how they are going to treat them is it because they are less privileged and they are poor? Is it because they wouldn't have a voice in the government, in the public domain, to speak out and cry out for them, accept the media? So why is Ghana at where we are today? Mm. Mm. Stephen, thank you very much. It's a very, very important question that you asked there. Makoni is on the line from Tema. Good morning, Makoni. Good morning, Mr. Darling. So, Makoni, are these calls fair? Yeah, 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 I think this thing happened okay uh, before the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. The intermediate or Akari, we started hearing this thing after the Christmas, to, uh, after the 2019. I don't know the reason why. Yeah. We do not hear immediately when the thing happened. We do not, I don't know the reason why. So I want to ask the parents, the time that the thing happened, I did go, where, where did you go and report the case? I did report the case to every person, policeman, walking around the town, or they go to the police station. They went to and the did, police station. So what, what, what do they, those police people do about the case immediately? Well, that's, we, my first, mm. that's my first question. And, and after the 2018, before I hear this, I was hearing it was three kidnapped girls. And I'm hearing for, I do not know where, I don't know the 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 the, the make announcement. I did not know. Now I'm hearing the the the, the fourth person too. So when you when you see the day that the fourth person was lost, I I, I don't know. I don't know what is what is. So going so on. you know what, Makoni? Let me let me take a moment and and help listeners out. If so, anyone so, else so, has these so, questions. So 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 the boss the 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 boss came and said that they they have found the 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 guest. And later on, you come and say a different thing. My brother, you are only a chini. Who says someone will buy a car second time? No, I'm not quite at the end of the day. Hello? Me waha, me waha, Makoni. Makoni, let me... Second time, I'm at the end of the day. Then I'm going to say, she said... Makoni, let me make way for Freeman from Accra. 
Um, so the last question he asked in Chi was that, do, don't I think that Madame Tiwa Adudankwa was insulting us when she came to say that she was simply giving hope to these families? Uh, so the fourth victim that we added was Ruth Abaka. She was actually kidnapped before any of these three other girls, just that her case was not publicized much until the other girls were missing already and their names were put out. So when the remains of these persons were found at the home of Samuel Udotek Wills, the police told us that there are the remains of four different people and so they are testing the DNA of these four people. We now know that she's one of the girls who are now dead. Freeman from Accra is on the line. Good morning, Freeman. Yeah, good morning, Dan. How are you doing? Hmm, Freeman, what, how, what can I say? Um, this news that we are hearing this morning. Yeah, you guys are doing well. Just that I feel like you guys are not drawing the linkages well. When the in- incident happened, how many times did the president speak on it? I guess once. The Minister of Gender and Social Protection went there how many times? Twice. And the Vice President is the Chairman of the Police Council. So if you guys are doing the linkages, you should do it very well. So that, in fact, why is it happens to the cliche? The back stops with the head. Drive him. This used to be your your big tagline, especially when Kojo Oponkuma was there. So please, if you are doing the linkages, it should be drawn very, very well. So it shouldn't end with Tiwa? No, 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 no. The president even has to take responsibility for it. Mm, right. The right. Minister of Social and Agenda and Social Protection has to take responsibility for it. We can't allow these things to be happening in Ghana. And to go on and then you see when you are doing this thing you go on then promising and then saying things that we are not even holding him to account for Freeman thank you so much for calling us this morning Claude is on the line from Tema good morning Claude good morning Daniel how are you I am blessed Claude uh, so are these calls for um, someone to resign um, fair or like Freeman is saying on the other line we should spread the blame and take it higher up to leadership of the country no I think um the CID boss is the head of investigation, so she should be held responsible. She, she needs to resign herself. You know, this is um, gross incompetence, and she has to resign. But then we need to do the linkages very well. The house that Wills rented, who rented it to Wills without a resident permit? Is that person an accomplice? Now, the police attack Radi where he broke jail. What has been done to them? They could also be accomplices because when he broke jail, maybe the, the girls were not there. They, they allowed him to go and do whatever he wanted to do with them. Now we need to know for what purposes were they murdered, for ritual or for organ sale or those things, so that we, 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 we are able to check other foreigners, other Ghanaians who are accomplices, who have rented our premises. Are these things going on and not reported? Because we hear cases of somebody killed here. It's not substantiated. Uh, a shaman. Uh, uh, you know, they mention places. And I think we, we need to look at Ghanaians who are renting out premises to people who have resident permits, who should be in hotels and are in our communities. Nobody knows what work they are doing. They are driving in tinted uh, uh, car, cars with tinted glasses. And they, you don't even know their offices. And they are within our communities. So I think Ghanaians should live up to expectation. We should not be greedy for money, just renting our houses for, to foreigners. And they commit all these crimes. Just but Saturday. you see, yeah, yeah, tell me about Saturday, Claude. You know, your, your, your hashtag, say something, say something. Mm-hmm. You know, last Saturday morning, I stayed in Tema. Our minister's car was snatched from him early morning. You know, a Toyota Highlander, early morning, it was just snatched from him. And these are some of the crimes that have been committed by people in this country. I think we, we need to be more alert about people who come into this country and are living within our country. We shouldn't allow that to happen. We shouldn't rent our houses to foreigners who do not show any documentation, uh, proof of communities right thank you very much thanks for calling but if if i may make this statement that crime has no nationality and so when you are renting out your home you should be careful about who you rent it out so you make sure that everything is above board but we also cannot pretend that it is only people who are from a certain place in this in this continent who commit crime 
I mean, everything should be taken at face value as human beings. People should be looked at as human beings, not as people of gender or people of, of nationality. But anyway, uh, that's just me saying. Mike is on the line from Koforidia. Good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning, Daniel. Yeah, let's hear you on the matter. But please, turn off your radio first. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, hope it's okay. Good. Let's hear you. Yeah. Yes. Um, just a little clarification first. Did this um, acting IGP actually say that the girls who were taken to Nigeria and, you know, returned to Ghana? He was only quoting... Hello? Yeah. So I didn't catch the last bit of your question. Yeah, I'm asking whether the acting IGP actually said that the girls were actually taken to Nigeria and brought back, or it was only quoting the suspect. Can I ask you a question? Yes. What's the difference between the two? If he was giving us something that he he was telling us what the suspect said, then he was only quoting them. But I want to say whether they established that indeed the girls were taken, because I'll be surprised that girls will be taken to four countries to and fro without any, uh, anybody catching them. That's why I'm surprised. So, so, but, so, Mike, he did not say at any point that I am simply stating what the suspect said. He didn't okay. say that at any point. Okay, okay. But me personally, I knew for, for, from the beginning um, that means would definitely be those of the girls because you, 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 the, 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 the remains were taken from where the guy stayed, where, and then where. Oh, Mike's line, Mike's line is not helping us, unfortunately. I really wanted to hear what you're saying. But please try calling us back. 0302-216-541-0244-340437. Sam is on the line from Tesano. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Dan. So, Sam, what do you think? Uh, Dan, I'm, I'm heartbroken this morning. Uh, to, to hear this news, I'm so heartbroken. But uh, before I say anything, has the, the family of the girls accepted the fact? Have they accepted that it's the, their, their girls who are there? Well, there, there are still members of the family who are disputing what the police has put out. But um, we do know that there are family members of theirs who um, are now directing their, their emotions at different things rather than doubting the reports that they have heard. But there are definitely, we have spoken to family members who say they do not accept these DNA results. Okay. Dan, you see, I, I want to agree with um, an earlier caller who... Uh, you see, when the, the 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 guy broke jail, I think I you could if you put one or two things together, you could you could clearly suspect that the guy broke jail to go and kill the girls and and put them in the septic tank so that uh, uh, they don't find them anywhere, so that he, he stand on on his lie that he is not the culprit or he, he has nothing to do with the kidnapping of the girls. And uh, I don't know what to say, but. But uh, to Tiwa, I, I think uh, the, the the least said about her, the better. Uh, she should she should resign. She should resign and 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 make peace. She should quickly resign. She shouldn't wait for anybody to fire her. And though all those officers whose hands the guy broke jail must also go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but we need to be very careful of the facts because remember, Samuel Ludotek Wills was caught a day after Prisla Mantibia Kranche was um, arrested. He broke jail in eight days and they found him in five days. So eight plus five is 13. That means that if the facts as the IGP put out are to be followed, within the 13 days, Prisla went to um, Nigeria, came back from Nigeria was killed and put in there. So that's actually puts a very tight window as a turnaround time. And so that I'm I'm just laying it because of the idea that uh, my very good friend Sam from Tesano put out there. Kofi Bajwemba is calling from Kumasi. Good morning, Kofi. Yeah, good morning, Daniel. How are you? Kofi, I'm not so good. I'm not so good this morning. Uh, I'm not so good too. Since uh, last night, uh, I've been completely... Uh, confused. I don't know how, I, I don't understand the whole issue that was narrated to us by the IGP. Daniel. Ah. So, 
It means that what the uh, uh, CID boss told us, what the uh, children and women, gender, what and what told us, all those information were false. And they are still at post. I recall during PNDC days, there was a case, I've forgotten the exact case, a police commander came on television to explain to Ghanaians what happened. And he was chewing a gum. The next morning, he was fired by the, by the then head of state, Jerry Rollins. You see, and these people have told us wrong information all this while. And they are there eating, enjoying salaries, going up and down. And they are still at post. You see, Daniel, I, for, for once, I have never, never liked uh, democratic governance. I always in support of uh, 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 military dictatorship because mm. under PNDC, this can never happen. It can never happen under any military regime. <laughs> anyway, you will see. But then again, mm. Kofi, under a military mm. regime, could you call Joy FM and speak? Mm. So it's, it's a question. Oh, Kwabna that... is calling from Accra. Let me put him on the line. Good morning, Kwabna. Good morning. Yes, Kwabna, let's hear you. Yes, um, I think we need to take a critical look at um, our police service, the way we go about doing things. You go to certain police stations and they don't even have thumbprint scanners. We don't even, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure we have a database of um, criminals or people who have been uh, called in. You know, elsewhere you go and then they take your thumbprint, they run into the system and, you know, looking at how, you know, a whole crime scene could be neglected like that. You go and then months, after you come back and that's where you find the, the remains. Elsewhere, they would have gone straight, you know, with their dogs and all that to sniff out any, any smell of, you know, human, uh, uh, the existence of the, the, the ladies there. You get that. But we have money and then we are using it for necessary stuff. You go to certain police stations, they don't even have a computer. That's how bad it is. Mm. You know, so I think mm. that's where we should be looking at how to improve okay. our system so that the these systems. things are not repeated. Right, yes. right. That's also another important point that you raised there. How well equipped are the police in the first place? My last caller is my good friend, Ajumain Joseph from Community 9, Tema. Joe, how's everything? I'm very well. I was like feeling wonderful. Um, hmm, yeah, trying. This news that we heard, I can't really under- answer that I'm feeling wonderful, can I? But if I inform that you were going to UK, so I would like to bring me ask my Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> That's another conversation, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> you have my number. Call me and let's talk. Let's talk about okay. the skills now. Okay, David. Mm-hmm. I think what happened um, is very unpath- uh, very pathetic. I mean, but um, I think Ghanaians should learn a big lesson from this, from the security agencies and also from the parents. Because initially, I learned when the issue came up, the, the, the parents were negotiating with the kidnappers. Meanwhile, they should have reported this issue to the police as early as possible. Secondly, the police also doing the investigations trying to bring back these ladies. I mean, they were, I mean, they fell under the pressure from the public. So at a point in time, they came out contradicting themselves, confusing themselves, just because they want Ghanaians to know that they are working, they are on point. Which means what they were doing, they were confusing themselves because this is a security issue. So I think going forward, we need to learn a lot about it so that we find a better solution to mm. these things mm. when they happen. Mm. Very important point you raised there, Jermaine Joseph. Thank you very much for calling. Long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. And we wish we would see you again indeed. Prisla, Mantibia, Crunchy. Ruth Love Quaison, Prisla Blessing Bintung, and Ruth Abaka. We're going to keep our eyes on this issue because these families are scheduled to hold a news conference right about now at Diabene in Takrade. Kojo Yangson is live there for us. We'll be speaking to them, we'll be hearing from them. Our text messages on the Super Morning Show are brought to you by Afro Daniel Back must last you a lifetime. Glyco Critical Illness Plan. G-SIP. Glyco, we're cushioning you for life. 
that from the 3rd to the 5th of October 2019, visit the 17th International Building Construction and Property Exhibition from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily. On the Friday, the 4th of October 2019 at 9 a.m., there will be a construction forum and at 6 p.m. of the same day, there will be the City Construction and Property Awards, an awards for, for professionals by professionals at the Accra International Conference Center on the theme Conceive, Construct, Conserve. This would be the Oscars for the building and construction industry. Good things we've been. Media partners include Joy FM. Right here, talk. Admission for participation to all events is free. Now starting this August, subscribe for only 100 Ghana cities and enjoy unlimited browsing for 30 days on Vodafone, 6th, on Vodafone Fixed Broadband. Now, simply visit any of our retail shops or dial star 900 hash and select option 7. Follow the prompts to subscribe now. The offer is valid for only active Vodafone fixed broadband customers and lasts on the 30th of September 2019. Vodafone, the future is exciting. Ready? And I'll tell you all now spend $6,000 and above and get a two-night stay with spa treatment at Royal Senchi. Spend $3,000 and get a one-night stay at Royal Senchi. Spend $1,000 and get a $100 voucher. Spend $500 and get a $50 voucher. And there's more. When you spend 500 Ghana CDs on a single transaction in Ghana, you get a 50 CD voucher. That's if you use a Stambic Money Wallet card. The only card that gives you access to five currencies at the same time. So, load up to five currencies. British pounds, US dollars, euro, South African rand and Ghana cities. Shop or transact business anywhere. Visit our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages at Stambic Bank GH for more information. Offer is valid till... Um, rewards last in September and October 2019. Stamic Bank moving forward. So we're going to take the Joy Business Minutes and a few messages when we come back. We're still talking about the Takrade girls issues. The family is scheduled to speak in Takrade. We have our eyes on that. Stay with us. Hello, it's Karen and Daryl with the Joy Business Minute. The National Insurance Commission has laid fears that a decline in insurance penetration rate is likely to impact negatively on the sector, leading to its collapse. According to the commission, the sector's penetration rate keeps declining. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana today begins its meeting to review the economy. This meeting, which is crucial after the banking sector cleanup, will see the committee take decisions that would influence cost of credit. The Institute for Energy Security has warned that consumers may be paid more for fuel following the attack on Saudi Arabian facilities over the weekend, knocking out about 5% of global supply. Oil prices ended nearly 15% higher on Monday, with the Brent benchmark seeing its biggest jump in about 30 years. And Ghana is leading sub-regional talks on sharing a submarine cable network infrastructure with Burkina Faso, Togo and Cote d'Ivoire. This follows some understanding amongst the countries for a seamless approach to improving internet connectivity within the West African sub-region. More news at 306. In a world where everything is changing around you, sometimes you need to turn to someone you can trust. You want to move with a change in safe hands, and we are here to help. As Societe General Ghana, we understand change because we have transformed and evolved. No matter how our name may change, 43 years of retail and corporate banking expertise never changes, ensuring stability and trust. Digital innovation as the world moves forward to help you adapt, upgrade, and keep up. Bank with Societe General Ghana and enjoy doing your banking your way. Whenever you choose, in our digital zones, we're cutting edge digital banking products and quality services. You deserve a better bank and great rewards. We agree, the world only moves because you make it move. SG Ghana, the future is you. It's not enough that your phone is like a PC in the palm of your hands. It should be super powerful and run like the fastest of PCs and allow you to multitask. It's not enough that your phone battery is better than most. It should be super powerful with fast charging. It's not enough that your phone's display is high quality. It should be the best. Your own movie studio with a cinematic infinity display screen. Introducing the next level power phone for power achievers. The new Galaxy Note 10 and 10 Plus with an intelligent S Pen that turns handwriting into text instantly in a 30-minute charge to last all day. That's next level power in your hands. Buy now and get a 100% broken screen repair discount valid now till 31st December 2019. Terms and conditions apply. Hmm. Health is life -o. 
If you play around with yours or your child, it will cost you pa 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 pa. Everybody's going to tell you what to try, which could be far from the cure. But listen, whenever you or your child experience symptoms like feverishness, headache, and sweating, first, you need to test for malaria at the nearest pharmacy or health facility. And if confirmed positive for malaria, then the ACT, which is proven to fight malaria effectively, will be prescribed. One must do well to complete the full three-day course of dosage. If test proves negative, further investigation should be done. Let's be serious with fighting malaria. Do the right thing. Let's come together and drive malaria away for good life. This advert is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service. From importers to exporters, direct to indirect workers, you and I, the MPS Terminal 3 is great news to us all. As a trader, doing business at the port has become easy. The machines are very modern and clearing goods has become very fast. As a port worker, it is a great joy to be part of over 1,000 Ghanaians working here. This new facility means a lot to us. As a cocoa farmer, I have more markets to export my products. The entire world cannot eat my cocoa, bringing me and my family more income. The MPS Terminal 3 is a game changer. MPS has invested in world-class equipment and technology to optimize efficiency of doing business at Temaport. This means more jobs, development and opportunities for our present and our future in Ghana. MPS, we connect, we thrive. What can 20 Ghana cities buy you? Airtime! Sexy ultra trophy! Hot chinky and domedos! Oh, ice cream! Dripping down your hands on your hot sunny afternoon. <laughs> Not My Husband, an original Ebo White play, shows on 5th, 6th October 2019 at the National Theatre. And from now till September 20th, you can buy early bird tickets at 60 Ghana City, saving you a whopping 20 Ghana cities for that kenke or ice cream. Tickets are available at Joy FM, selected shell shops and our regular outlet. WhatsApp us on 050-554-6030 for delivery. Sponsors, Bond Savings and Loan, Old Mutual Life Assurance Company Limited. And Passion Air, Media Partners, Joy FM, Hits FM, Joy News, and Joy Prime. Roverman Productions Early Bed Tickets. Buy your tickets now. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, Kwame, so you're telling me that if I spend a thousand dollars, I get a hundred dollar voucher? Yes. And if I spend three thousand dollars, I get a nice day at Royal St. Chi? Mm hmm. Are you sure? Oh, yes, and many more. With the Standbic MasterCard Money Wallet, you get to do business and even shop anywhere. You can load up to five currencies, British pounds, US dollars, Euro, South African rand, and Ghana cities. I took the card on my last business trip, and just like that, when I got back, I went to relax at Royal St. G for a night. Hey! Oh, you don't know what is going on. Standbic MasterCard Money Wallet. Bring home more smiles. Visit our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages at Stanbic Bank GH for more information. Offer valid while rewards last in September and October. Stanbic Bank, moving forward.